This watch right here proves that I have zero willpower whatsoever. Now I've mentioned this one a few times before, mainly during my Mako 2 review, and more recently when I talked about how Warrant USA said that these new divers will not be known as the Mako or Ray 3s. And I really, really was going to wait till they were available stateside, but something kind of happened. I noticed on eBay that Creation watches had dropped their price just a little bit. At the exact same time, they had a 10% off coupon from Creation Watch. At the exact same time, eBay had an additional 15% off coupon, and I just couldn't resist that. Now I have to hand it to Creation Watches. They had this from Singapore to my door in five days, being delivered on Christmas Eve, and that was with just whatever the free shipping option was. Now as you can see, I went with the dark red or maroon version instead of the green version that I also liked. And the main reason for that was because I've actually found some really nice green divers in the past, and I've even picked out a few that I'd like to purchase in the future. But I've never quite seen one like this with that brilliant sunburst dark red dial. So I figured it was kind of unique, and this was probably going to be a watch that I wanted to keep. Now since this doesn't have an official name yet, I've started calling it the Mako X. X is in the mathematical variable X. That, and I think it sounds kind of cool, kind of like Racer X. But if and when Orient USA does give this an official name, I'll wind up changing the title and the description to match its new official name. And one more thing before we start to take a closer look. Bob over at Time to Go Travel and Timepieces recently got the exact same watch, and recently released an unboxing and first impressions video. So after you're done here, I'd suggest you go take a look at that as well as keep an eye out for his final review, which should be coming soon. Honestly, this watch and dial are so stunning, you should try to see it in as many angles as you can. But let's get things going by first taking a look at the dimensions. Now on Orient Japan's website, the case is listed as 41.8 millimeters, and I'm not really sure how they're getting that. I find it to be closer to 41 if you're going straight across, and closer to 41 and a half if you're going from the two to the eight. With the crown, the width is 44.5 millimeters, and lug to lug is just over 46, and it has an overall height of 12.5 millimeters. Weight-wise, it is a very solid feel at 156 grams, which is in part due to its 22 millimeter solid link bracelet, and it is a real diver with 200 meters of water resistance. Overall, it's a really nice size for a diver, and very similar to the Mako 2 or Ray 2. It should give you some good wrist presence without becoming unwieldy. The finishing is great, with a polished stainless steel on its sides and back, with a very small amount of a brushed finish on top of the lugs. Now one nice feature you won't notice until you take off the stock bracelet is that there is a cutout in the case between the lugs to help with straps. To the rear, you also have a closed case back, which seems to be standard with Orient divers. If you're familiar with the Mako or Ray 2s, this is a very similar case. Where you start to see some differences though, is in the bezel area. It's still unidirectional and has 120 click, and I believe it's still an aluminum insert. But what's different is how it slopes down as it goes outward. It's not quite flat, but it doesn't slope down near as much as say the Mako 2. The angle is less dramatic, which winds up giving you more of an edge to grab onto and manipulate the bezel which is one of the issues I had with the Mako 2. The bezel is very good and has very little play to it, and also has a great sound. The design of the insert is a little different than the Mako 2. It's more similar to the Mako USA, but with some minor differences as well. Now on this one, it's a matte black insert, which I think contrasts beautifully with the burgundy dial we have here. From what I've seen, there are five different color versions of this watch. You have a standard black and a standard blue version. And you also have another blue version, but with kind of a unique mother of pearl dial. There's also a green version, which really isn't listed anywhere, but seems to actually exist. And then you have this one with its unique burgundy dial, which I think looks fantastic in person, as well as in every photo and video I've seen. In fact, I can't really think of a bad photo I've seen of this watch. Now, it also looks fantastic on a variety of straps, and I've put this thing on a lot of straps. 
probably more than I can actually show in this video, but I'll try to show off as many as possible. Now the dial layout here is very similar to the Mako USA's, but with some minor differences. The hour indicators are applied bars, except for the 12, which is this large upside down triangle. They're all beautifully done with silver outline and white loom center. Although the center is more of a cream color than white, which I think contrasts nicely with the white on the chapter ring. Now another difference here between this and the current line of Orient Divers is that it lacks a raised chapter ring. Instead, the dial just seems to disappear underneath the bezel. And one thing I love here is how the larger dots on the chapter ring are touching the edge of the hour indicators rather than being spaced out. It seems to give them the appearance of floating on top of the dial, which is aided by the color contrast of the white chapter ring against the cream colored indices. The Orient logo is applied as usual, but where the vibrant red colors of the crest usually tend to stand out, here they seem to blend into the dial, which I think gives it just a little bit of a cleaner look. The day and date window are at the three, and they're framed and I'd say as nicely done as other Orients. It's in a black text with a white background, which I think helps it blend in with the chapter ring. As for the hands, you have a very large arrowhead for the hour, and a very long pointy sword for minutes, which is a little different than the Orient USA's, as their sword is a little shorter and a little wider. The second hand is also an arrow, but with loom at the end. Now, this dark red burgundy dial version is a little different than the others, in that the second hand just has that loom tip where in the others, it actually has a red outline before you have the loom center, which on this version, I think would just blend into the dial and be hard to see. So they went for a different look here to help that second hand stand out, which I do think it helps stand out in between the indices, but it does tend to blend into the indices when it's on top of them, which I think might be my only real complaint against the design here, and I think it's a minor one but it may be a reason for some to look at some of the other versions if it would bother you. It doesn't bother me very much, and honestly, I think it's really worth the trade-off for everything else you're getting with this one. Overall, I really like the hands. The hour hand may be a little short, but I think the minute and second hands have a good length, but together I think they lend perfectly to the overall design of the dial, which I simply love here. I really wasn't sure how I was going to feel about the dial color until I actually saw it, and honestly, I can't help but keep staring at it. Now sitting on top of the dial is the sapphire crystal, which is really one of the reasons many people were excited for these watches. The Meiko and Ray's mineral is okay, but many would love an upgrade to sapphire, which is one of the reasons the Meiko USA 2 was created, although it's limited just to North America. However, one advantage of the Mako USA I should mention is that it does have solid end links on its bracelet, not to mention drilled lugs. Now you do have a signed crown at the three, which is protected by crown guards. And just like the Mako 2, I did find it to be just a little small, which makes screwing it in and out just a little difficult to get it away from the guards. Just a little bit, not much although the smaller size of the crown does make sure it doesn't interfere with your wrist. Now, as for the movement, this uses the same F6922 in-house movement that's in many of the other Orient divers. So you'll have a standard beat rate, 40-ish hour power reserve, hacking, and hand winding, which would be one reason to get this over an SKX. And as for accuracy, I've been losing about four seconds a day over the last few weeks, so overall I'm pleased. Now the big question that I'm sure everyone wants to know about is Loom, and it was one of the first things I tested. Now I actually gave the Mako 2 away as a Christmas present, so I can't do a direct comparison. But one of the things I noticed when I did my Mako 2 review was that I think its Loom is on par with the Spinnaker Tesse Titanium. So I put this Orient against that one, and in my opinion it's clearly better. Not only is it brighter, but it also lasts longer. So I think I can say that this is better than the standard Mako 2. But more importantly, I wanted to put this up against the watches I have that have the best loom, and these are the ones to beat. 
and specifically, you'll notice the Seiko Ice Monster to its right. Now, I'd say this Orient is initially as bright as the others, and after 45 minutes, I'd say it's still pretty good. Everything is nice and clear and really easy to read. And I'd actually say it's on par with the Seiko Ice Monster, which means overall the loom is really good. Now combine that loom with the Sapphire Crystal, and you have a very compelling upgrade from the Mako and Ray 2s. Now as for the bracelet, it's pretty good. It's a solid length stainless steel bracelet with more of a polished edge to it. It has a nice finishing and pretty good weight to it, not to mention a signed push button clasp. It may be a little loud as you move, but overall it's pretty good, and really no reason to change it unless you really want a different look. I'd say it's about the same as what you get with a Mako or Ray 2, with maybe some minor design differences when it comes to the logo on the clasp. And just like the Mako 2, it also wears great on the wrist. There really is a reason people love these size of divers. It makes the perfect size for an everyday watch. It's a design that balances comfort with still being tough and capable. It's a watch that gives great wrist presence, but really doesn't get in the way. And with the right strap, you can almost forget it's there. Overall, I really love this watch, and it's easily becoming one of my favorites. And with my favorite band so far being this khaki canvas and leather number, where it has this reddish brown leather that I think really matches the dial. There's so much that Orient got right here, and really nothing they got wrong. In fact, there are some definite improvements over, say, the Mako and Ray 2s. So this is definitely a recommended buy. My only advice might be to wait a little bit till there's more availability and see if the price drops a bit. Now they're currently priced around 250 to 275 US dollars. And that kind of puts it right in between say the Mako 2 and the Mako USA 2. So let me put it this way. If you live outside of North America and you're looking for an upgrade to the Mako or Ray 2s, then this is the watch you want to buy. But if you live in North America, it's a little more complicated as you have easy access to the Mako USA 2. Now, there is no burgundy Mako USA 2, but they do have the standard black, blue, and this really cool white version. Now, color preferences aside, if you could get the Mako USA for the same price as one of these, the Mako USA is the way to go. Not only are you getting solid end links, but you're also getting drilled lugs. Now, if you can't get the Mako USA for the same price, or you just don't care about the bracelet and you're gonna throw it on a NATO or something like this, then this is definitely the way to go. Now, let me know what you think about this watch in the comments, and specifically the burgundy dial. Is it something you would have gone for, or would you have preferred more standard black and blue? I'm still kind of curious what that green would look like, but overall, I'm really happy. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for joining me, and I hope to see you again.